What's up guys, Pete here, and welcome back to another hard use knife review. Today on the bench we've got the More Knife Companion. This is a great little knife that I did a very quick little overview of when I first unboxed it. Now I just want to clarify one thing. It's a little different than the last time I did a hard use review. The Benchmade Griptilian I had owned for years and used virtually daily. This knife I have owned for almost exactly a year, but have only been getting use out of it these last three or four months. That being said, however, these last three or four months have been real hard use conditions. I have abused this knife, I have beat this knife to hell, and I want to show you guys how it's withstood all of that. There are three things that I want to cover in this video. That's going to be the corrosion resistance, the edge grind and how that's stood up, and the overall rigidity, ruggedness, and toughness of this knife as a whole. First thing I want to talk about is the corrosion resistance or lack thereof. This is a high carbon steel blade. It is very prone to rusting. Um, and it is very evident on this knife. That being said, it is closer to a patina than real rust, but there are definitely some spots that are distinctly rusted, primarily up in here by the grip. Obviously, you're going to get a lot of moisture trapped up there. Uh, and even if you do try and dry it, that is the most likely spot that you are going to miss. So keep in mind that if you are going to dry it off before you put it in the sheath, which you should always do, by the way, uh, that that is one little point that you're going to have to focus on a little bit extra. Um, personally, I have used this thing pretty regularly. Uh, for, in my cases, uh, we were planting potatoes, so that meant cutting through 250, 300 pounds of potatoes with this knife. Uh, that exposes it to a lot of moisture. And unfortunately, because it was just part of the daily routine, I would go through, do all that, put it back in the sheath, and then I'd kind of forget about it for a couple hours and go, oh crap, I need to wash this off and dry it. Um, so, you know, poor care on my part, but not necessarily on the part of the blade. That being said, however, it is going to rust regardless if you get moisture on it. Even if you do take good care of it, if you're not getting every last drop out of the sheath, off of the blade, out of this little crevice in here, it is going to rust, unfortunately. But like I said, at the moment, it's, it's closer to just a surface patina and not really actually any damage, no real pitting or anything like that. So this can be cleaned up relatively quickly. That being said, if you're going to go at it with something like a really fine sandpaper, uh, an emery cloth, or um, something like steel wool, for example, anything that's going to put little fine scratches in the blade, you're going to have to be careful with. You're going to want to oil it definitely after doing that, because those fine scratches increase the surface area of the knife, and it's going to cause it to rust even quicker. So if you are going to use an abrasive to get rid of the, uh, the patina or the rust, it, just remember you're kind of working against yourself, and it is actually going to rust a little bit faster if you don't take good care of it. That being said, if you do oil it properly, it should be okay and it should last just fine. This knife is still more than functional. Yes, it will damage the edge if you're not careful and you, you know, are going to have to resharpen it more regularly. Uh, but it's not going to fall apart in your hands or anything. However, I do not recommend this knife if you're going to be on a fishing boat, whether it's on the ocean, a lake, a river, a stream. If you're somewhere around the water regularly, all day, especially salt water, I don't necessarily recommend at least this particular model. I believe More Knives has other stainless steel versions. Um, I just got the high carbon because I didn't have much experience with it. So just, you know, use it for what it's meant for. Could you use a high carbon blade like this out on the open ocean regularly? Yes, technically you could, but for the amount of effort and upkeep it's going to take, I don't know if it would be worth it. But, you know, all that considered, it's still holding up just fine with, you know, relatively minimal surface patina and rust. That's still more than serviceable, in my opinion. So with that said, let's get on to the next topic. That very nice, very unique Scandi ground blade. Now, I just want to clarify one quick little thing. When I first got this knife, oh, and for those of you who don't remember or don't know offhand, uh, Scandi ground just means that when this knife is cut and ground, there's only a primary bevel. That's this first broad angle change that you see when the, uh, going from the flat down to the edge of the blade. On most knives, you have a secondary angle down here, a secondary bevel. On a Scandi ground knife, you do not. And this is, you know, sworn by by a lot of bushcrafters out there who say that it's easier to sharpen, it's a better cutting edge for various things. Uh, I'm not going to get into that too much. I'm just going to say that I did enjoy it. But when I first got my knife, it seemed to me like there was already somewhat of a secondary bevel. Not quite a micro bevel, not quite a full bevel, somewhere in between. Somewhere very shallow, very fine, but it seemed like it was definitely there. And because I had to freehand this, because on the Lansky system, you only get four options for the angles. And since none of those options perfectly match this angle, I would have to completely reprofile the blade. And that would just have taken way too long. So I freehand sharpened, which is more realistic anyway. And it's more what this was intended to do. It's meant to make sharpening easier. So if you literally just have a stone that you picked up by the creek somewhere, you could sharpen this blade up. That being said, 
with what I believe to be a slight secondary bevel, that was always the angle that I found while sharpening, which meant that every time that I went in to sharpen it, that was the angle that I got. Not a huge deal breaker for me, still very sharp, still works fine. Last thing that I want to talk about is the overall ruggedness and rigidity. I have been, uh, been batoning with this knife and haven't had a single issue with it since. Now, I do want to say that this knife is probably not intended for that as it is primarily a three quarter tang knife. Not being a full tang knife means that yes, it is more prone to breaking and damage, but I didn't find that in my case at all. It has withstood just fine, no issues whatsoever. Overall, this knife has stood up to everything I've thrown at it without exception. I do have to sharpen it up every now and then, but that's because I've been beating the hell out of this knife. It has withstood everything I've thrown at it, and quite frankly, I think it's one of the best options for the price because it is so cheap that even if you break the darn thing in half, just go pick up another one and it's no issue. It's a very nice, very versatile camp knife, very light, which is another huge plus. So yes, rave reviews for me. I think this thing is an excellent option for the price range for general camping, fishing, hunting, whatever you might have to do with it. Just keep in mind the few points that I mentioned before. Pretty much covers everything I wanted to talk about. So thanks again for watching guys. As always, please like, subscribe, and comment down below if you have any questions regarding this knife, another knife, or ADC in general. And as always, guys, keep your edges sharp and your mind sharper, and I'll see you in the next one.